In this video, we're going to set up a Power Automate Cloudflow that will send us a notification of our expiring Azure app client secrets. This flow that we're building does require you to create, first create a table or SharePoint list that contains the client secret expiration. So what I've done is I've created a SharePoint list, which I've titled Azure Apps, and I've added some columns, including the, the title column, which I've renamed to app name. It contains the actual name of the Azure app as it appears in Azure. And then it contains the URL to the um, app in Azure. And then it contains the app client ID which you can obtain right from the uh, or overview page of the app. And then a status column, which is just telling me that these are these apps are actually in use. And these ones are apps that exist in my Azure account, but they're not currently being used anywhere. And then I've got another link here where I have tested these applications. So the HTTT, HTTP calls, to the get the token and then actually do the specific action. So in this case, this app, what it does is it gets um, team owners from team. And this is the cloud flow that I built that actually tests those actions so that I can easily, you know, go in to this flow and, and test. So that is a URL that links to that flow. And then I have the column for client secret expiration dates, which is a date column, is and should be a date column. So that is my list. And if you have something similar to this, then you can follow the steps to create the cloud flow that we are going to create, which will send us a notice based on the dates here. When these, uh, when it is w within 30 days from the dates here, it will send us a Teams message. Now the flow will run on a schedule and it's gonna run every two weeks. So um, when it runs and it does find that there are any uh, apps in, in the row here or any rows with the date that it is within 30 days, it will send us a notice. Um, as you can see here in the final row, I've got one, because today is January 17th, I've got one that's expiring uh, January 30th. So our test, Ron should pick up this one here and send us a Teams notice. So I'm going to go over to Power Automate here and I'm going to create a manual trigger flow so we can test this. And then after you're done testing, create another flow, a copy of this flow with the schedule um, as your trigger and set to every run every two weeks. And we're going to create this test flow. The first action that we need it's going to be a get items action. And this purpose of this action is to connect us to our SharePoint list. So if you search for get items, it's a SharePoint connector action, and then connect to your site address, and then choose your list. So I'm choosing the Azure Apps list that I just showed you. Now I have to do one additional thing, which is under the advanced parameters, you have this option for filter query. So select that, click away, and then in the filter query field here, you're going to put in the column name of your expiration. So for me, the column name is client secret expiration, all with no spaces. And then a space and then LE, which stands for uh, less equal so it's going to be less than or equal to right um and then here we're going to do single quotes and within the single quotes we're going to add an expression and the expression that you would want to use is in the description of the video below i'm going to paste it in here so this expression here it's what it's doing is it checking the the um, only the client secret expiration date against the date that is uh, thirty within thirty days from today's date. So I'm going to click Add to add that expression in. 
Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a compose action and we're going to run a test because I want to make sure that my filter that I've added is working. So I'm going to put in a compose and I'm just going to compose the title of the app. So if I get the dynamic content from our get items action and select title, and then I'm going to save and test. Now with that filter on there, it, we expect that it will only return this row right here, because this is the row that has the, the only date in this whole list that is within 30 days. So let's go ahead and test. So we can easily see by the compose that it, it did return one. And if we click on this, we can see that um, the, the output is create flow, which is the name of this, the app name of this row here. So it did return what we wanted it to. We're going to edit and you can either leave the compose in there or you can um, repurpose it for the message body, which is what I'm going to do. So before I do that, I'm going to add an action, which is going to post a message in Teams. So if we search post message, it's going to be a Teams connector, post message in a chat or channel. Now you can do this any number of ways. You can create a, have it send you an email, have it message you directly. Um, there's a lot of different ways, but this is the way that I'm choosing to do it. So if you follow, if you're following this exactly, then we're going to select user. You got to make sure that your user is um, in a member of the specific channel that you're posting in. Otherwise it will fail. So I'm going to select channel and then choose my team. Now for this message, um, I'm going to select this team and then my channel. Actually, you know what? We're going to do this channel, general, and our message. Now, this is where I'm going to repurpose the um, compose up here to be the message body that I'm going to include in my Teams action. Now, the reason I'm doing this is just simply because I find that formatting HTML in a compose action is much easier than formatting it within the message of an action like this. So like an Outlook send email action is the same thing. You can toggle to the code view and type in your HTML, but I find that it, 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 will, it often gets messed up. So the next best thing you can do is just put the dynamic content of your composed message here into the body here and compose your message in here and your formatting is um is going to stick so i'm gonna i already have my html um all ready to go but what i need to do is fill in some fill it in with some dynamic content so i'm giving the i'm having the message include a a link that will take them directly to the Azure app so that they can update the client secret and that tells them to update the client secret. So that would be app URL. And then we also have um, the name of the, of the app, which is again, the title column, and that's going to turn this into a link, clickable link. And then we'll expire on, and we have the client secrets expiration date. So I'm going to select that as well. And then the last thing I have is just a link that, well, it there's instructions to tell them, like, make sure that you're creating a new client secret. And then you're also um, updating the proper Power Automate flow that contains um, that, excuse me, that are using the app. And then I've got a one more link in here, which will take them to a Power Automate list, which indicates which apps are using or excuse me, which flows are using those apps. And I'll show you that right quick. I have this SharePoint list called Power Automate. I have flows in here. These are all my active flows. Um, and this is where I have a column called Azure Apps and it contains the app um, in a multi-select multi choice. Um, so they, I've got the apps built right into here and then I just um, add them to this row because this is the row that contains three different um, Azure apps. 
So that's how the user will then know, okay, this is the one flow that contains this app here, get teams, team owners, and it's expiring. So I need to create the new client secret. Uh, and then I need to go into this flow and I can click right from here and go to the flow and update the action with the new client secret. Let's go back here. We can save this. And I'll run a test. It's a very straightforward flow. Really the, the, um, the maintenance of course here, which involves you creating a table for your Azure apps. And this is a great way because there's no mechanism within Azure that will send you a notification if your client secret is expiring. So this is how I track my client secrets expiring. And also just, a, it gives me a good overview of like, hey, here's your Azure apps, what's being used, what's not being, what is not being used. Um, my test cloud flows. Uh, it's very, it's just a very like helpful way to organize your apps. Okay, now we have a successful run. So I'm gonna go over to Teams. And in my uh, general channel here, here is where I ha just received the message. And here's my link that will take me to Azure if I click on this. And here's my expiration date. And you can always re reformat this date too um, in a, with a compose expression. That will change it to, you know, spell out the date in a prettier format than um, what this is. And then here's the link to go to my Power Automate uh, list in SharePoint. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found this useful. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.